here noticing um, what a different take young learners especially, but learners altogether have when they're learning outside formal contacts. This year, Vector has decided to change the way we present and share the results of our commissioned research. To engage our key partners outside the world of Vector, we're holding a series of seminars looking at the key themes we feel have current and significant importance. I'm thinking of all the more exciting uh, tools of technology that uh, are out there at the moment. I would mention uh, Web2, all the uh, tools where communication is the main aspect. Young people use technology to make their lives easier and more interesting and importantly, to stay in touch with one another. We want young people to extend their social networks and for all sorts of reasons, whether it's to study, work or to enrich their social life. We want young people to enjoy being young and learning as part of that experience. Importantly, we want tomorrow's workforce currently in school to develop skills that will enable them to collaborate in teams productively and effectively when they leave. To achieve all this, we need to make sure we support all those who work in education to harness technology in a way that can exploit how young people are already using it. Let's take a look at how well the largest pupil referral unit in England has managed to engage its students by maximising the benefits of a funded technology project. This is Roland, <laughs> myself, Prince, that's Hasnan. The Bridge Academy targets learners from a range of different backgrounds. We've got learners who have been permanently excluded from their mainstream school for one reason or another. We also have learners not coping in the mainstream lessons or in the schools um, and have been identified um, for a managed move to the Bridge Academy. You're going to have to write three questions which you are going to ask the people who are sat behind you now. There are some fantastic people here. They are, they are excellent in terms of their subject. There's a certain amount of flexibility. So I, for example, specialise in ICT but teach art as well. Um, so there's flexibility in those terms, but also we develop their pastoral skills and we have tutors who are working with young people uh, on a day-to-day -day basis and really get under their skin in terms of knowing what goes on in their home lives, knowing what's affecting them on the street, because invariably they bring that into school. So we start off with the first thing. Most of our kids use MP3 players, they play games, they're always online, they're used to the internet, they're used to the new technology. And I think using the old kind of chalk and talk method wouldn't work with these type of learners. Is being on TV fun? Yeah, being on TV is lots of fun. Well, the idea of today was that we took uh, some situations that, that the kids have in their lives all the time, the use of mobile phones, the use of technology at home, and actually applied those to what we do in study with to make more real um, the experiences that they have. Being able to communicate with them on a platform that's, that they're used to or that they know well is absolutely necessary, I think. JC, a bit small enough. JC really wants to be a photographer and had completed at home a series of amazing photographs that she hadn't been aware of how she could use those in art. So we were able to suddenly bring that in, tap on that huge resource and interest that she had and straight away di direct her to using tools such as Photoshop, a little bit of video editing, things that she didn't realise she could classify as art. The, the change in her and her enthusiasm for the subject has been phenomenal. But we found very quickly that we were forcing young people into classrooms that they didn't want to be in. And that was causing problems for us in terms of behaviour, in terms of attendance and all sorts of things. So we, we looked at our curriculum and a lot of schools are doing this uh, and have done this to provide a more flexible curriculum for their young people. So we had a root and branch change of all our systems to go to a four day week uh, to have staff in here to develop resources while the learners were at home being expected to engage with those activities. Well it's easier for me to work at home because here like, once you get to work for your lesson like, you've got to do it straight away but if uh, at home I can do it any time of the week just as long as I get it done. We provide a, a computer, we provide digital camera, the printer, everything they need uh, to be involved in the digital age. Built into our learning environment, um, there are certain monitoring systems that allow us to see uh, what they're doing online, where they've been online, what they've, which resources they've looked at, uh, how long they've looked at those resources. It's great to work at home because you have power over when and how you learn. It's an easy and much better way than previous work methods like books and stuff. 
I'd much rather go on the computer and like look at an online book than a book most of the time. Like you can email the teacher when you have a problem, if you don't know what you're doing, and then they'll get straight back to you. And then the problem's solved. We traditionally run parents' evenings here, as any other school does, and we'd often get 20 to 30% attendance. On the day that we launched the Bridge Academy Online, every single parent carer of this group of learners arrived to actually take part in the launch. We just go down and it comes up again. We have a group of young people who are disaffected, and believe you me, we will pay for them at some stage, and it might as well be now. We might as well have this relatively small investment uh, to engage these young people in the learning system, to get them involved, to keep them in learning, uh, so that they have better life chances. When online learning is designed and delivered to the right people at the right time, it can open up a world of opportunities where there never seem to be any. Distance learning can provide expertise that may otherwise have been unavailable. Crucially, there's the major benefit of being able to incorporate personalised student support mechanisms within an online delivery system. If young people are keen to drive technology at home and at school, then we as educators need to recognise how best to extend and enrich their learning journeys. Online learning, the benefits and the challenges the history, but not the future. We don't know what's coming next, but we do know that technology will be at the heart of it. It's a very exciting time. I mean, I think we've now got a range of technologies which are really kind of have the potential to lead to a kind of paradigm shift in terms of, of what students are doing, both in schools and at home. By commissioning research and holding seminars like this, Vector is supporting the hard work of all professionals who want better opportunities for learners.